so how about this ingredient, uh, Salmatin? One of the big questions I get uh, when I show somebody the new Zest product is, is what is Thalmatin? Yeah, so Thalmatin is basically a, it's a sweet tasting protein that's derived from a, a West African fruit called the Katemfi fruit, right? So it, it's basically, it's a protein. So it's not a carbohydrate. It's not a, you know, it's not a sugar. It's a sweet tasting protein. And so it doesn't have a, any sort of appreciable effect on blood sugar or insulin or any of that stuff. It's basically just a protein from this this fruit that um, sweetens the product and it also acts as a subtle flavor modifier as well. So that could be one of the reasons why um, our, our protein doesn't taste quite as much like peas as maybe some of the other products that aren't sweetened with thalmatin. Yeah, and it's it's 100% natural. There's, there's nothing synthetic about it. Uh, no allergens that you know of that people are worried about with that. Yeah, as, as far as I know, the one thing I would say is that people can be allergic to anything, right? right? Some some people, someone somewhere could be allergic to anything, whether it be, you know, there, there are people who are allergic to, to, to beef and lamb and things like that. Um, foods that are considered to be very hypoallergenic overall can still have people who suffer allergy from. So I would never be, as a scientist, I couldn't sit here and say, well, no one could ever experience an allergy. But with, um, with something like Thormatin, the, the safety data looks really good. It's a, natural, um, it's a naturally occurring protein within these berries. And so we considered that to, to be just a good functional food that could be incorporated into the product to really improve um, the, the taste and palatability because that's, that's also important. You know, we, we need yeah. to be able to enjoy what we're taking. And very few people want to take unflavored protein powders of any type because let's face it, they just don't taste all that good. Some people love them and that's great. But for a lot of us, we're like, oh, I want something a little bit different. I want something that tastes pretty good. And yeah. so, you know, that very human aspect of having things that taste great is really important. And it's more important than just a sensory pleasure. There's probably other aspects to that where we enjoy things, we end up having them more frequently when we enjoy them, perhaps, you know, perhaps we even digest them or utilize them more effectively. You know, that's been a theory. I don't know if it's been um, yeah. proven, but you know, there, there are aspects to that that are really important. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a great point. You know, somebody was telling me one time that the most important thing about your nutrition is how you feel about the food that you eat. Um, meaning like if you have uh some kind of negative experience towards what you're eating, uh, it can have a lot of negative benefits and, and vice versa, you know, uh, feeling really positive can, can see you through a lot. Might yeah. not work for everything. There, there are, um, I'm going to use a very long word here, psycho neurophysiological effects of yeah. all those things. Now there's some, there's some good evidence out there that if, for example, we're exposed to, bad circumstances you know we have stimuli that affects us negatively we maybe we're really highly stressed and we begin to associate that with particular foods that might be a, an aspect of intolerance or or even allergy right. that, that emerges um, but even more important than that i guess is that if we look at anything that people are doing nutritionally over the long term yeah. there's not that much difference between let's say different diets and this is an area that I've, I've researched a lot. This was sort of the, the premise of a lot of my master's and doctoral research was this idea of looking at different types of diets. And when we look yeah. at them over time, there's often not that much difference between them, even if some suit some people better physiologically or some get better results in the short term. Over the yeah. longer term, if diets have certain things in common, mainly that they're based on mostly unrefined foods as compared to ultra-refined foods, over time, they, they give very similar results. The key thing then becomes, what can you stick to? And a big part of sticking to nutrition is to make sure you're replete with micronutrients like vitamins and minerals, yeah. getting enough of the, the macros that you require, particularly protein is the key one, yeah. and also having it be enjoyable and easy enough that you can do it over the long term. Yeah. So as a clinician, rather than, you know, I take my researcher hat off and start to think as a clinician, the important thing there is, well, what simple strategies can people use 
to be more compliant over the long term to get yeah. results. And protein being a key nutrient because it's so satiating, a protein powder is going to fit in very easily there. And so if it's going to help, it also needs to be easy to take, easy to mix, and taste good. So you've got to check all those boxes. That's, that's really great.